This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X230 T, uh, the tablet slash touchscreen version of the Lenovo ThinkPad X230 laptop. This laptop features a Intel Core i5 3320M CPU, two core, four thread at 2.60 gigahertz. And right now I have eight gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM installed. And you of course can upgrade that to a perhaps more desirable 16 gigabytes. And right now I have a 256 gigabyte Kingfast solid state drive, 2.5 inch SATA 3 installed. Um, you can also install a mSATA SSD and that would fit just below the uh, palm rest on this model. And I'll link to a video where I do that install and test it out. Uh, just a quick note that I do believe that the mSATA SSD will run at SATA 2 speeds and not SATA 3. Uh, this still will provide good performance, but just an FYI in case you're wondering. And of course this features a Intel Centrino Advanced N6205 Wi-Fi adapter with Bluetooth 4.0. And as we see here, we have Intel HD Graphics 4000 for the integrated GPU. Uh, before we move on, some of the keyboard features. Um, the standard chiclet style, but there's also a backlit keyboard option. And of course we have the characteristic red touch point where you can uh, use that instead of the touchpad. Another nice feature that I appreciate are the volume buttons and the mute buttons. Just being accessible without having to press the FN plus uh, volume up and down button. So next we'll take a look at the I.O. ports that are available on the side of the laptop and then I'll demonstrate how to uh, rotate this and use it as a tablet for drawing or whatever it is that you want to do. Here on the left side we have the Wi-Fi toggle for on and off, an express card reader if you do use something like that, USB 3.0, a full-size display port and VGA, and one more USB 3.0, and there is a fan grill for air exhaust. And on the right side, we have a 4-in-1 SD card reader, USB 2.0 always on if you can, and you can charge your phone and stuff like that while the computer's on and the laptop lid is shut. There's an RJ45 Ethernet port, microphone and headphone input, this uh, is where the 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD is installed. There's a place to store the pen and of course the Kensington lock for security. Here on the bottom of the laptop of course we have battery access which I will remove right now and here's the uh, port for the docking bay if you do have one and I'm just going to demonstrate where to find the RAM it's just underneath this panel and this will allow you to do a quick upgrade if that is what you want to do. So two very easily accessible dim slots and I'll quickly demonstrate how to remove the keyboard and access the uh, mSATA slash WWAN port underneath the palm rest. So there's a key or a screw rather right here and a screw right here. That will allow you to remove the keyboard. Now for the palm rest, everything is labeled on the uh, case itself. You'll see a little graphic beside each screw here. We have one, two, three, four, five screws to remove. And now we can flip it over. And taking a tool similar to this, we can gently lift up the keyboard. And it detaches from the motherboard 
from this little cable right here. And now before accessing the underside of the palm rest, there's a little ribbon cable here for the touchpad and you do have to remove that. And then you can just, with your hands, gently pull up on the palm rest and the little plastic clips should um, unclip. It's so from here on, you can easily access the innards of the laptop, at least as far as the Wi-Fi card goes. The Bluetooth card, which is right here, CMOS battery, and right here is where the MSATA SSD could be installed, or a WWAN networking card for remote work, if you don't just uh, tether your laptop to your smartphone. A uh, fairly standard 720p webcam. bezel there's one two and three places to remove a screw so I'm going to try really hard okay I've got my gaming SSD hooked up and I've connected the mouse to the laptop as well and the first game that we'll try is Left 4 Dead 2 all right, so as we can see, it loads very well. The animations look pretty nice on this display, actually. And we're averaging <clears throat> around uh, over 60 frames per second, 70 frames per second. Um, it's actually playing quite smooth. See, it does dip down to about 45 frames per second, but that's totally fine. I don't have huge gaming expectations for this laptop. Uh, this would mainly be for like general use, but yeah, it looks like you can definitely play this game very well. All right, next up is a Tomb Raider 2013 test. And I chose this last level because there's a lot going on. And I want to see how it handles on the integrated HD 4000 graphics. Uh, so far so good though, I have the graphics settings set to low. And we're still averaging over 30 frames per second, which is about uh, what I would expect and also what I would consider totally playable for a game like Tomb Raider. The cutscenes do look nice. All right, there should be no problem playing this game. Um, I had a pretty smooth experience, and yeah, uh, check Tomb Raider 2013 off the list for playable games. All right, I thought I'd try out some Counter-Strike, uh, just practicing with bots, just to see what the gameplay will be like. So I didn't actually adjust any graphic settings, um, this is just playing, just loaded up the game and we're averaging roughly around 30 frames per second, uh, good enough for a guy like me, it's smooth enough, um, of course you can probably increase the frames per second if you uh, adjust the settings, but for me and for right now, it's okay. But I have low expectations for uh, games that I don't really uh, play much. 
But anyways, this runs really smooth. Um, I think that you can check uh, Counter-Strike off the list. As long as you're like a casual and not competitive. So is it worth it to use a Lenovo ThinkPad X230T in 2022 and 2023, which is coming in about a month from this video? Uh, yeah, if it's at a reasonable price, um, I would be selling these for roughly $150 Canadian right now. And I think that's a pretty fair deal um, just for uh, a laptop for general use, a little bit of uh, art, uh, a little bit of gaming, all within the capabilities of the hardware. So yeah, if you're looking for a brand new laptop experience, they're probably not going to get it with this, but um, you probably wouldn't be looking at this in the first place. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully that you learned something while watching this video and maybe you can share something in the comments below about your use with the X230T. I would totally use this laptop if I didn't already have another laptop that I use for daily as a daily driver. Um, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I'll keep one and continue using it and explore what I can do with art. Alright, so thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day.